Hello, good morning. Good morning. Uh, so today we have the pleasure. Welcome back, first of all, welcome back to this YouTube channel. And today we have the pleasure to speak with Steve Burke. Yeah. Steve, um, the reason why you are here, obviously, is because you have lost your child. Yeah. And um, first of all, I should say that you are a very strong man and congratulations for having the courage to show your face and to say to everyone, share to the world your horrendous experience with the social services in England. But you are a very strong man and you are not giving up on your son. So thank you for giving the strength to the people. Thank you. Steve, uh, should we start then? Yeah, yeah. I'm ready, good to go. Yeah. Uh, I must say that we are talking about Shemayek, right? That is a beautiful boy that we can see. Shemayek, yeah. Shemayek Stedman, but yes. Stedman, his middle name Stedman, I named him, the middle name is after my late brother. One of my late brothers died in a car crash back in 1990, so I gave him the name Stedman, you know. So Steve, um, I believe we are going to back to 2016, and um, please yeah. tell everyone which council in England is involved on this. Um, it's Baines, Bath and North East Somerset. Okay, yeah. 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 Um, the social services themselves are based in Canesham. That's in between Bristol and Bath. Okay. And when when was this? How old was this when the problems they started? How old was my son? Yes. He was um, two. Yeah. And uh, we are back in 2016, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, early, early 16. Yeah. So you had. You were in a relationship and uh, I believe that the things they were doing well and um, it was a, a safe environment for your son until until something happened and you had to uh, make a decision. And, and, and re <clears throat> remove him, yeah. So do you want to explain that please? Um, basically, um, there, there's a, there was a lot of history with social services prior to me meeting my partner and um, that followed her because she was originally living in London and that followed her down here so um, everything was fine until because um, I didn't actually live with her I lived in a place called Trowbridge in Wiltshire she lived in Bath <clears throat> and I would go over and spend time and that <clears throat> and then I um, got to find out that um, there was issues with the children over there, and my son and that, and um, I removed him from her. Do you understand why? Um, a bit of negligence, really. Um, drugs involved, um, and um, he just wasn't safe there. Okay, but were you on drugs? I wasn't on drugs, no. Have you ever taken? Have you ever put your baby in in a in danger in a danger environment? I've never put him in danger, no. Okay. I, I, I cared for my son. Okay. So what did you decide to do then? So I removed him from there, and um, he lived with me, and um, the social services came to see me there at, at my house, and the guardian. Was Cascaf and um, the health visitor, and um, I had all good reports, and um, I enrolled him into nursery, dentist, doctors, and um, the reports was that he was thriving in my care. Okay, well then. So the reports they were good. So they were checking on you. You you you, yeah. you took the baby from probably a hard, difficult environment uh, where they were. 
pre another and uh, pre years, um sorry there was another children involved on, on from that mother and the social service they knew about it so that's why the social service they were already around so you took yeah. the baby yeah prior to, to her having my child yeah was involved with them yeah yeah so you took the baby and they are checking on you if you are a good father or not and you have good reports could you give an example of a report please the, the, um, the guardian, the CASCAP officer, his name is Charles Plummer, and he said that um, Shamaya is thriving in his father's care and the house is clean, my son's always clean. I, I, I had a good um, schedule with him where I bathed him every night, covered him in cocoa butter, pyjamas, and he would go to sleep and um, get up in the morning, breakfast. How was know. he? How was he? Was he a happy boy? He was very happy, yeah. And um, not far from me was my sister. She's got two lovely daughters, and they, they were like his sisters, and they really cared for him. They used to come over a lot and help me if I needed any help. And yeah. So it, the it, cousins, they had a good relationship in between, and you, you had yeah. the, the support of your sister too. Yeah, that's right. And the nursery, all good reports. They would say when I brought him to the nursery, they could see that there was a good bond between me and him, and everything was fine. Okay. Were you, were you working back then? I wasn't working, no. So, I, say it, please. I was a single father, yeah. You were a single father. So and I wasn't working, yeah. I'm just going to do this question because it's just for the people that are listening to us to understand that they know with who they are dealing. Were you on benefits back then? I was, yeah. Okay, so you cannot say that you were a financial rich man, correct? Financial? You are not a financial rich man. So yeah. the social service, they know if uh, if they go and they pick on you, they know that you, you're going to struggle to have a good lawyer, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they do know, do that. Yeah. Yeah. They know with who they are dealing. Uh, let me say like that. Yeah. So everything is fine everything is doing all right they are checking around but uh, uh, Shamaya is doing very well the doctors they like um, the, the way you Steve are, um, are dealing with Shamaya uh, you are a good father the reports they are good um, but something probably happened right yeah it did yeah um, the, the first social worker that was involved he was, his name was Andrew Lamb, and he was a very nice man, everything was fine, um, I had to do a parenting assessment, um, I think I'd done one parenting assessment with him, and then they took him off the case, and um, they brought in another social worker called Sarah Phillips. So uh, his reports, they, are, they were on your favour, he was happy. Yeah, his reports, I've got all of them, yeah, his reports was good. So you I find strange that. that he was taken away? He was taken off the case and then they brought in someone else called Sarah Phillips, yeah. And um, from that day she came to my house. When I first met her, um, I could sense that there was something wrong, you know. So my, my instincts told me to, um, the next time she comes, to buy a dictaphone to record because I didn't like the way she was going on and I've got about 48 to 50 hours of um, recordings yeah. of how I've been treated and um, did you yeah, ask that, that, did you ask us Steve why the previous social worker um, was moved out of the case? I did ask them, but they, they just gave me some explanation that he he had to move on for some reason. Okay. They gave me some excuse I can't really remember. Yeah, okay. And how, but, how was she? How was she with you? She hated me. Why is that? Can you give an example? I just believe that they brought her I brought, they brought her in to distract and to take children because um, after all the damage that she's done, she's disappeared. 
Okay, so you cannot find her now. No, you can't find her on the on, on the on the internet. Um, you go into Google or anything. Like as I said, if I go on there, I can see Andrew Lamb and the previous ones, but Sarah Phillips is nowhere to be found. So you have Luke with the uh, register number. Yeah, and can't find her nowhere. No, there's no pictures of her. Nothing. And she she's an independent principal social worker, and um, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's weird. She she's left. She's after. After my case, when they took my son, she no longer works for Baines. And uh, what does your instinct say about that? That they brought her in to kidnap my son. They brought her in to, to um, it's called legalised child abduction. And um, sometimes I ruminate and think, has she got him? Okay. You know, that's the sort of things that's going through my head and that, you know, because as, as I said, I'm, I'm very strong-willed and um, I've never, like, needed to, you know, take antidepressants or, or you know, really go through deep depression and all that, but when they took my son, I had to have counselling, you know, and, um, yeah, I just found it very suspicious that... Um, she disappeared. She, so you, your instinct as a father is that Shamaya probably is with that social worker, Sarah Phillips. Yeah, that, that does pass through my head because she came into the case, yeah. she got him taken, and then she's gone. Okay. Steve, would you like to say how they did the things? Because if the reports do you good on you, what happened for them to take your son from you? Um, it was a normal day. Um, Shemaya was enrolled in nursery, so he used to have two afternoons and one morning. So this was an afternoon um, session. So he's all got ready and all that. And um, I brought him to the nursery. And um, before I got to the nursery, the social services, Sarah Phillips, rang the nursery to ask them if my son had been dropped off, which was a bit suspicious. So anyway, the, the nursery told him, yeah, Shemaya's here, he's been dropped off at the nursery. And by the time I returned back home, I had a police raid. Um, you had saying, a what? Sorry, sir, Steve, you had I, a what? I was raided by the police. Um, suspicion or intelligence that I had a shotgun in my house. So... Um, after they turned the house upside down, obviously they didn't find no shotgun. How many people were, how many policemen were in your house, Steve? About seven. Um, after they turned the house upside down, they made up excuses saying that there wasn't sufficient food and the house wasn't um, appropriate for my son and all that. After I've already had these good reports, um, then they... Obviously, the social services knew this because they're the ones who ran the nursery to find out if I dropped my son. So they they gave the police the alert to go. The police come, raid the house, and then the social services ring me the next day saying that they've heard about an incident and they think that my son is in danger and they need to take him into foster care. So the... the so I see let me, sorry, let me interrupt you there, because uh, everything is fine, all the reports there are good, you go and drop off the, the, the baby in the nursery, you, you, you can see that they made sure that the baby was at the nursery, so you can see that something was planned, yeah. about eight, eight or ten, pe ten policemen turn yeah. up at your house, your yeah. neighbours they see all of that and probably have been treated like a terrorist. Yeah. Your house is completely turned up, turned upside down. Yeah. Because they said they 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 were looking for a shotgun. You had a shotgun in your house. Yeah. So they're saying that there's intelligence that I had a shotgun. So how could they have intelligence that I had a shotgun? And I've had my this happened in August, 2016. I took my son from February, 
So February, March, April, May, June, July, August, six months. So if they have intelligence about me having a shotgun with a two-year-old baby in the house, and they're just raiding my house now, and it wasn't firearms response, it was just normal police without, without firearms, because if if you get if, if there's a call out saying someone's someone's got a firearm, yeah. they deploy the firearms police. Do you understand? Yeah. Have they found the shotgun? No, there wasn't any. No. Have they found any drugs? No. Have they found anything at all? No, there was nothing. No. Nothing. Nothing at all. No. And they what they've done was the social worker rang the guardian. The guardian was on his way on leave for, for a week and remember he's gave me good reports so they rang him and said about this incident and then the guardian just said yeah I agree take him remove him without even in inquiring or asking me anything they just took him how did they excuse themselves by going to your house and they haven't found anything what they have written on the reports that they were looking for, what did they found? Nothing. They just told the judge that, um, that, 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 that the relationship broke down between me and him, me and my son, and he's at significant risk. You know, they all work for each other, don't they? So they, they, the judge agreed because of the, the police raid and the guardian, and they removed my son. I was so heartbroken, I couldn't even go and see him at contact straight away in foster care. I just couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to do that. But the mum, the mum did. So your the, relationship broke down. That's yeah. That's what they tried to say. Yeah. I yeah. from a, a previous conversation that for me to know your story slightly better. Uh, there is one thing you can say later on, but I found so shocking. Can you share with us, please, what did the judge said to you regarding your son and uh, the relationship that you would never be? I would never be in, a, in his judgment. Is Honorable Judge Stephen Wildblood? He's an advocate for false adoption, and he's in his judgment. Later on, when he, my son did get adopted, he um, went as far as to say that I would never be in a position to look after my son again. How could you know that, you know? Does yeah, that's he, right. He, he knows the future more than anybody. Does he, does he have a crystal ball and he reads the future? Yeah, that's right. But what they seem to do is they, they, um, they move the goalposts a lot, you know? That's what they do because I try to get my sister to have my son and they wouldn't let my sister have, have him. Um, what a lot of them, in, in between them taking him yeah. the, sh the shotgun raid, yeah. they um, they done a lot of dirty, you know. Yeah. Um, I, we did, I got him out of, out of foster care with one of my nieces. So um, for me to get in with my niece, was a hard struggle because they were trying to find any dirt on her. They tried to say she's got a phone number of a drug dealer in her phone. Her brother is involved in this and that, but their hands were tied because she hasn't got a criminal record or nothing, and she's got two beautiful children. How old is your niece? My niece, I think she's, she's about 30, 32. 32, okay. 30, 33, yeah, 1990 she was born, I think, yeah. So usually, usually when the mothers and the fathers, they try for, for their kids to stay with the grandparents, what the social services they used to say is, oh, they are 60, they are too old. Yeah, but, but, but what Sarah Phillips done when she first came to see me, she, she asked me those questions, is my parents alive or not? And asked about a family tree and all that. So she, she knew that I never had my okay. parents. So... Uh, so they didn't allow your niece to have your son, and they use... No, no, they did let her have him. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, yeah. And, and then they, they um, put pressure <clears throat> on her and her partner, saying that her partner 
is is an abusive partner, and um, he's at, my son was at significant risk of being there. So then they so then they they eventually they put so much pressure on their relationship when they was doing unannounced visits, coming around at night, this that this that this that this that until the, the partner and they were arguing and and um, then they um, said that my niece was not working with, working with them, yeah. and because my niece was still bringing him to the nursery, yeah. so um, when they applied to go to court to try and take my son from my niece, they thought my niece was going to be at court as well to fight for him to stay with her. But, but me and my sister and the mum went and my niece went to pick up my son from the nursery as normal time scheduled. Yeah. And the nursery would not allow her to take him and he was very distressed saying, I want to go with, I want to go with my niece, I want to go with my niece. And then the nursery would not allow her to pick him up or allow him to go with her. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know, but what we learned was the social services rang the nursery and told them not to give my niece my son. So this is before the judge has even made a decision whether to take him from take my son from my niece. So anyway, my niece has left and gone home distressed. My son's at the nursery distressed. Yeah. Then then the judge does make a decision that he they he believes that he's at risk with my niece. So when when my niece is at home. And me, my sister, and the mum is at court. Sarah Phillips isn't at court. She's at the nursery taking my son. And they drove him up the motorway to, to a place called Rawlton with, with nervous medication, no, no, only the clothes on his back, no comforts, nothing. And drove him up, to the, up the motorway to a strange house where he resided for 15 months. And um, that's just one of the complaints that I've, I, I've complained and I've got, I complained 14 times about the local authority, but I've got nine proven. And that's one of them, how they took him um, from the nursery and the way they took him, you know? And um, when they did take him like that, we packed, it, packed his suitcase and all his belongings and um, got someone to bring them to the social services for them to bring it to Rawton, to where he was, and his belongings remained in the social services for over a week. Mm -hmm. Medication, um, is, you know, kids have got stuff that they really like, isn't it? or they remember, he used to have a Thomas pillow, yeah. and he had this Thomas pillow, and, and, and that remained in the social services, they, did, they didn't care to let him have, the, have his comforts, if you know what I mean. Yes. They just, they just wanted to get hold of him. Yeah. So that's what happened. So then he remained, my son remained in, um, in Wilton for, for, for um, 15 months he was there. They're off, Ofsted registered, Sue Hill is her name, and her husband is called Luke Hill. Wilton, this Swindon. And um, so, um, Contact was going on, yeah. and we was going to see my son. They would bring him to Canesham, we'd go to the contact centre and all that. And um, to be fair, Sue Hill was very fond of my son. She got to really bond with him and really loved him, you know. And um, when they used to go to contact, the, the mum and my sister and myself, when contact is over, yeah. we, we would um, make sure that the transaction was done properly and Sue would come into the into the room and he would say, right, so my Sue's here now, so you're going to go with Sue and we'll see you next week or the week after or whatever. And he would say, yeah, if you go on the bus and very rare, the transaction was fine. So like I said, Sue... Um, Sorry, it was my cat playing. Carry on. <laughs> Sue, yeah, so Sue was really fond of him and um, one time we went to contact and Sue said, look, because proceedings are going on, they're trying to do adoption and all that sort of stuff. So Sue said to the mum and me and um, my sister that 
there's a thing called shared care where we can prevent him from being adopted and shared care where she would have him and we could still see him every now and again, you know? And um, we agreed with that. And the mum was so, the mother was so happy, she told the social worker, Sarah Phillips, that, oh, there's a thing we can do called shared care. So Sarah Phillips decided to say, how did you know about that? So innocently, the mother said, oh, I heard it from Sue, the foster carer. Um, the next time we went to contact, they made it that there was to be no contact with the birth family and the foster carer. And the, the following contact, Shamaya was distressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, you're, so, you could see there is signs that they were not working towards the family. They, they wanted yeah. to take your son. They wanted to take my son, yeah. Yes. Um, at, at one contact, I remember saying to the contact work, worker, Sarah, Sarah, I can't remember what her last name is, and I was really depressed, and I said to her at the contact, do you really think that he's going to get adopted? And she never said, Steve, um, he's at significant harm, or what he's been through, or um, he's, at, you know, he's at risk, or nothing like that. What, what what her response was, I think he will look at him. Look how good looking he is. So that just shows you it's like a prestige car and a mini and you put it on a four call, which one's gonna sell first? Yeah. People's gonna put on the prestige car and that's yeah. what her response was. Your son would sell very well in adoption. Yeah. There that's you. what she said to me, yeah. So the adoption agency would make good money. Yeah. That's what it is, yeah. Um, as I said, I got I got nine complaints proven against the local authority. I've got letters from the diversional director telling me sorry for what they've done to me and my son, and they they're going to try and put in place that what happened to me and my son don't never happen again. You know, i.e., I'm a Rastafarian religion, yeah. and uh, on the goodbye visit. The last one, they never thought I was going to see him. So I had to, you know, really press on them to get the goodbye visit because to get a goodbye visit, they have to take photos of the parents with this with their child to put in their um, life storybook and stuff like that. Hmm. They didn't even want to do that. But anyway, I pressured them to get the goodbye visit. And when I... Um, when they brought when they, when I seen him in contact, they cut his hair off and okay, westernized, so, westernized him. So, and regarding your 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 religion, can you explain what it means by you saying you are Rastafarian? What do you not do, and what did you ask for them to not do to your son to um, by respecting your religion? Because in the child and care review. They asked what your, the parents' wishes are, and my wishes was for his hair not to be cut because we are a Rastafarian religion. And they listened to me and they, they never cut it. But what I'm saying is, they never thought I was going to see him again. They thought that the, the, the visit I had, the last visit I had, was the last visit, but I pressured to get a, a last goodbye visit. And when I went to see him, at the goodbye visit, they cut his hair and um, they were feeding him what as well? Yeah, I believe they were feeding him pork. Yeah, that's something and that that we don't eat. Yeah, yeah, and um, they, they, the social worker lied and said that he was complaining about his hair because it was a heat wave. And um, as I said, I got nine complaints, and in the chronology, it shows you. The, the, the independent investigator went as far back as to find as to see what the weather was like on the day that his hair was cut and there was no heat wave. They just wanted to cut his hair to, to westernise him to make him look good for the adoption catalogue. Yeah. So that's good to show you you could be Muslim, Sikh, whatever. As as they take your Sunday, have no respect, they will do what they want 
with your child. And that's part of what I'm going through now, thinking what else are they doing to him? What else is he going through? Because they say when a, when a child is um, adopted, in his, in his um, care plan, placement care plan, it said that he will experience trauma, grief, confusion, and a sense of loss. Yeah. And that's hard to, to hear that as so, a father. So, Steve, just, just to clarify, you had a sister, and your sister had two children. And She's got two beautiful children, yeah. And your, got, yeah. And your got, son had a good relationship with the cousins. Yeah. But, but they, let, yeah. they didn't let your sister to stay with your son. Actually, yeah. did they do any investigation? Did they do any reports on your sister? They they done a, um I can't remember what it's called. They done some kind of assessment. Yeah. Okay. How old was your sister? Um, at that time she was like forty five, forty three. Okay. Not so not too old, right? No. Not too old. If there's only three years. 10, 11, 12, 13. There's only three years between her youngest daughter and my son. Yeah. And and how are the cousins right now when they lost him? Um, every now and again, the youngest daughter, will, she comes downstairs um, going through grief. She has nightmares and she sits down and asks about Shemaya and where is he, what are they doing to him and all that. And she cries and the mum and dad has to comfort her and all that, you know? She could be driving in the car on a Saturday and then she just burst out crying. Missing you know? him. Yeah, Shemaya has got six siblings. And um, all of them are going through so strength, she... grief, confusion, yeah. and a sense of loss. So Shemaya was taken from you was taken from the opportunity to stay with the niece that herself she had children as well right yes yeah, she's got two children my niece yeah so your niece is good enough for her children but not good enough for your son no and your sister she's a good mother good enough for your nieces but not for your son for my son no that's but, how much but, Sh but shamaya she he have siblings as well that they were growing in foster care yeah but um he didn't have he didn't have a chance to stay with the siblings in foster care either no no um his siblings was in long-term foster care and they, they were together two of them was together and one was one one was el elder and shamaya was put separately and um basically they severed him he's lost his identity um the culture everything the roads everything he's lost everything yeah he lost everything and we know why they they took him from your family from all the chances that you could stay in the family because he was yeah. good looking because he was a baby two years old and you would yeah. sell for adoption yeah um so when 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 the, when the court proceedings started and um they um they got a placement order for him. They said, yeah, he's to be adopted. Um, he was still in foster care. They never found prospective adopters. So we learned that in his child and care review, if within six months they haven't found prospective adopters for him, we can revoke the placement order. So we got solicitors to contact them to ask, have they found prospective adopters and they have to respond within 14 days of receiving the letter so 14 days passed and still no response so I got my sister to ring them again to ask them what's going on you know so they said sorry about the delay and all that so the the, um, the child and care review what, what they originally wrote to them was meant to be on the second, like say for example the second, I can't remember what month it was now, but for example the second of, of May, and when we did get a response, they, 
they said, I'm sorry, this holding care of you, we made a mistake. It wasn't the second. We forgot to put a one in front of the two. It's going to be on the 12th. So we had to accept what they said. And then on the 11th, the day before, we could have revoked it. They found a doctor's. It's all planned. It's all planned, yeah. Yeah. Um, Steve, um, there was one meeting that you had with your son uh, on the contact. And you said, I love you. Can you say what happened? Share your yeah. experience. Like I said earlier, um, when they first took him into um, foster care, I couldn't bear to go to see him in foster care. I just couldn't do it. And, um, it's too painful. It's horrible. It was too painful. But um, your son. When, yeah, when my niece had him now, I went to the contact. So we, we had a good bond in. It was nice. And in the contact centre and that. And then they said, OK, Mr. Burke, it's time for me to finish up contact. So um, I finished up. I went to get my coat. And my son went to grab his coat as well to come with me. And um, obviously he couldn't come. And I broke down. And um, he was holding the contact worker's hands, just looking at me like confused. We are going together. You are my father. So obviously I'm going with you. Yeah, don't you love me? Why are you taking me? You know? And um, as I went out, I broke down. Uh, that was the first contact. So the second contact, he was leaving with my niece. And, um, and I said, all right, so I love you. And he said, no. And um, yeah, I broke down again. So he's like two years and you can see that it's very hard and it's very difficult for him because his father is not taking him with him. Yeah. And, and back then he's with your niece. So yeah. you know that your niece is not telling him horrible things like your father does not love you. But you can see that him on his, on his brain is thinking. If my father's not taking it with me, it's because he does not love me. It does not make sense. Now, yeah, like I just gave him away and all that, yeah. Yeah, now, he's back then with your knees. Now, growing older with someone else, obviously, we know that they are being told horrible things. Like, your parents, they have abandoned you. They don't yeah. want you. Yeah, because there's a... Um, when you got adopted... Um, they said that letterbox contact could be shared once a year, and um, they could they might consider photos. Um, when you do letterbox contact, they want you like um, they sent me some suggestions, and it it says suggestions of what to say, like not to get emotional in the letter, um, to say things like. I, um, sorry, I can't look after you. <laughs> so it's a lie. Which is a lie. Um, hope you're happy with your new family. I hope you are, sorry. I hope you're happy with your new family, which is a lie. Yeah. And um, when I sign the letter to sign it, Stephen, don't sign Daddy because he's got a new mum and dad now. So basically you can see that you are being told... We, yeah. have, we have constructed a lie and we want you to get along with this lie so yeah. we really make his head that you have abandoned him and that you do not want him and he needs to move on with his new family. Yeah, yeah. and when they read that letter to him, he, he believes that that's what I believe. So I didn't do letterbox contacts. But anyway, the adopters, once the um, adoption order was made, they turned around and said, um, they don't want to do no um, letterbox contact and they don't want to share no photos. So he's just disappeared off the face of the earth. Yeah, so that's how we can see that there is a difference between birth parents and, and people that they buy children from others. Because when you love a child, you are going to protect that child. You want yeah. that, that, that boy to know where is he coming from, 
to to know the family but when you are just when you just bought a child you 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 want about your feelings you don't care about the child feelings so no, you no, don't want him to know the truth it's unconditional yeah. with, a, with, with, a, with your biological yeah. parents nothing can't no no one or nothing can't replace that so steve they made the adoption obviously you 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 did your best you went against uh, you you did all the chances you know you went you went through all the steps that's what i mean you went through all the steps in court right everything yeah i even went as far as to get my mp michelle donovan wrote the judge a letter saying please don't adopt my son i'll do anything basically and um they just he just denied that he didn't care, he didn't um, care. so they just didn't care they told a lot of lies they um my eldest son He's 26, I think, 26, 27. And um, they said he didn't, he didn't need to have contact with him a goodbye visit because they believe that he's, he's only ever met him once. You know, um, people were saying to me all the time that um, it's like they showed no compassion, none at all. They were ruthless. So you didn't have any support, no help from no one. No, they just wanted to take him. Yeah. So yeah, they're, and, they're, they're, they're eye on the prize, yeah. And I suppose that your lawyers, they were from the government, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I suppose as well that you had to spend money from your pocket to try to get some justice, didn't you? Yeah, well, we did a lot of that, yeah. Um, when he got placed with the doctors, we, as we said, so we learned again now that um, we've got a certain time period to take it to the law, Royal Courts of Justice to appeal it. So we, me and my sister done everything that we had to do. There's a lot, you know, you've got to file this, file that, um, photocopy this, do this, do that, make sure this is there at a certain time. But we've done it all. And then we needed, we needed the minutes from the actual court case and the judgment from what the judge and that said. So we asked the court for it, so we sent it to the Royal Courts of Justice and then then we could log the appeal. Coincidentally, they said the recording wasn't working. They haven't got the recordings, the minutes of the um, court case. So they what they done was ask the social services, the same people who steal my son to give the courts their, their minutes to the Royal Courts of Justice, and then the judge seen all that and just said, no, carry on, take him, and, that, and that's it. So Shamaya, how old was he when he was adopted? Nearly four. And? Very strong-willed, knows who I am, knows his family, you know? I remember on the good Bible visit, I said to him, who's your dad? And he said, you! I said, what's your name? And he said, Sham Burke. <laughs> and I showed him a picture of his bro of my brother. And I said, who's this? Do you remember who this is? And he said, your brother. Where is he? So, he's not a baby. Yeah. He, so he has those memories. You yeah. made, you made, you made sure that he knew inside of him yeah. that he it's, had a father. He had yeah. his name. That's not the one that probably they're going to give to him. I don't know. That's right. Yeah. That's probably why they're not letting us have um, letterbox contacts or nothing because they're probably going through a lot with him because he's probably restricted. He's probably rebelling. We don't know. Yeah. He knows that he does not belong there. And, yeah. That's, yeah. Um, when was the last time you saw him, Steve? Um, it was July... July 2017, they gave me the goodbye visit. That's when I know they cut his hair and all that. Um, prior to that, they stopped me from seeing him. When they took him to Rawton, they stopped me from seeing him for five weeks illegally. So under Section 37 or 34, you're not to stop a parent from seeing their child for no more than seven days unless a judge grants it. 
and um, they refused me contact with him. And then Lyle said that they didn't think I wanted to see him and that sort of stuff. But then my sister's letters proved that I was begging them to see him. And that's one good thing. Judge Wildblood did have a go at them and said, you're acting illegal. But we know, I know why they've done that. It's so they were trying to break the, yeah. the connection. Some shit, yeah. yeah. That's what they've done, yeah. And all they've done is said, sorry. I've got nine sorries. And they said, I can take legal action against them if I so wish. Uh, Steve, the pictures that you send to me, can I share in here? Or there is faces that you do not want to show? There is members of the family. Yeah, you can, you can share them. Okay. I, I, I asked them for their, uh, um, if I can share it. And okay. they said, yeah. Okay, so let's share with everyone. That's that's with, with one of his, his, his sisters, yeah, that's one of his siblings, okay. yeah. Okay, and um, this is, a, I don't, probably the phone changes, but let's try to see. That's a beautiful family. Yeah, they're all beautiful children, yeah. That's all, all the mum's children, yeah, all five of her children. And he's been severed from all of them, yeah. That, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's his mother. No, that's his sister. That's his you sister. Him, she was very close to him. Can you see how she's got him in her in her jacket? Yeah. Like when, like when a kangaroo's got him in her in their pouch. She really loved him, and when they took him, she was um. I phoned her one day, and she was very distraught. I asked her this morning, "Could I, could I share them?" And she said, "Yeah, yeah. He's a happy boy." He loved his family. They loved him. And that's a picture of you both. Me and him, yeah. Yeah. Now, can I share the video that you sent it to me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that was on his birthday, his second birthday. Mm. Is that short? Yeah. Okay. I think there was another one, but I think I might have finished it. Okay, it was a short video, but it's just it's, yeah. it's just to yeah. share that he's uh, he had yeah. everything. He had it's, family, it's, joy. Yeah, you can see all his toys behind him. That yeah. Was his birthday, yeah. You can see that there is a. Uh, Lots of members in the family, very happy. This picture says it all. Like this, this picture is beautiful. Yeah. I'm sorry. He's been, that... he's, he's been severed from all of them. Yeah. So yeah. it's just like a. Uh, I don't know even how to describe it. It's just a, a beautiful apple, and I'm just going to pick the beautiful yeah. apple and take yeah. it from. It's, it's, it, there is it, no way it, how to describe it. It's, it's, it's against my human rights. It's, it's, it's inhumane. Yeah. What they've done. Yeah. They don't care about him. They don't care about the family. They don't no. care about nothing. They just want to make money. And there is, a, I wouldn't say a family, but there is a man or a woman or two women or there is two men that actually they cannot get. Uh, obviously, they cannot get children on their own because the nature does not allow it. And the society now believes that they can actually have a right to have children. And I don't know how do they guess that the children comes if it's from uh, the birth or it's from the, the Santa that just brings a baby. And um, they are actually they are happy to lie to these people and to say hey, I have a little boy in here that was abandoned by his family. The, yeah. the family, they were on drugs. We found yeah. him in the bin. Um, yeah. Can you take care of him? And, uh, and exactly. society now, uh, a white couple, and when I say a couple, I mean two boy or two women or uh, etro couple, they it love could... to have black children or yellow children or red children because the society believes that is 
it's beautiful adoption is beautiful because it, these children uh, they yeah. they they were suffering so yeah. we are going to give love but unfortunately they that's do not the, know they, what is love that's right yeah they and the, the adopters need to know this if they don't know this already they must know this by the time that when they see him they must know that he hasn't been through anything he was loved very loved very big family so you believe that when you was two three four years old and someone says hi i'm a new mummy i'm a new father he's going to no. say no yeah he's saying no yeah i have my father you're not my father yeah. he knows he knows he's embedded in him he knows so they're going through a lot of problems with getting him god knows what they're doing to him yeah yeah so they are saying to him you are a lucky one because we yeah. we took you yeah and you are and not he, in foster care you yeah. are a lucky one and they are, they are treating him probably like you are a lucky one yeah and 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 um you, your mum and dad can't look after you yeah and they know you're here yeah yeah they're, they're telling them whatever they want yeah but he knows deep down that inside of him that that's and, not and, true and, and that's if you know i shouldn't say this but that's if he's still alive because god forbid but if anything does happen to him i won't be notified and if anything happens to me he won't be notified yeah you know sometimes steve one thing that i think is you know that there is sometimes health problems that a person needs a kidney from a, a, f a member of the family and sometimes I wonder if my son would have any health problem would they leave the child just to die just for the sake of dying because they don't care for him or they actually they would come to me and ask for help yeah you, you, you have to think that yeah 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 because because your your kidney is compatible yeah yeah it's true and I, 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 I know that they don't have no feelings. They, they don't, they don't know what is love. So probably just for not show him his face to me, so I would not know who he is because I don't know the face of my son. I, I probably I could go on the streets and I would not recognize him. God forbid this, but this is the truth. And, and probably they would let the child to die instead of telling me he needs your help and please help him, you know. Yeah, that's how evil they are. Yeah, they are evil, yeah. It's, it's terrible, it it's really terrible. is. I've, I've never, as I said, I've never experienced nothing like this ever in my life, ever. Steve, did, did, you, know, did you know that you, you were born in England, right? Yeah. Did you, did you have a... Have you ever heard about forced adoption in England? I never really paid much attention to that sort of stuff because it didn't it didn't concern me if you understand what I mean. I knew what adoption meant, but I just thought that was for people, you know, or children that obviously needed to be adopted. Yeah. Whether they had, you know, um, broken ribs or they was left at home on their own and starving, looking for the bin for food, you know, stuff like that, you know. So I didn't really pay it much attention. But right now, if, if I hear adoption on the telly or on the radio, I'm glued. You know, some nights I'm up till five, six in the morning, going through Google, putting in his name, Trying to find him, looking at this site, looking at that site, you know. How old is he now? He is going to be 11 in October. Secondary school's coming up. Um, you know, some, some children can be very spiteful. And, and so you're adopted and your kid, your mum and dad, where's your dad, your, your mum, you know. And, um, he yeah. has cousins and siblings that they are going to look for him you know that yeah but there is um there is always a, a math that we 
parents that have been stolen, we, we do, is when is he going to be 18? That, that, that year, right? We always do that much. Yeah, but what I, um, tomorrow's not promised to anybody, is it? Yeah. So when he's 18, that's 2032. And I don't know if I'm going to live till then. Anything can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But um, like you said, hope. That's all I can do. And I hope that he sees this. But he knows how to go to internet. With the 11, he, uh, yeah. he does probably, homework on computers, right? Yeah, but they're probably monitoring him. In him or um, preventing him, I don't know what they're doing to him. They could be abusing him. Yeah. You know? I've got a lot of siblings. My sister, one one sister says, she, like the sister who's got my two nieces or live nearby, she she doesn't really say much, but in court she was defending me and all that, and she was showing pictures to the judge and she broke down. They had to suspend the court and all that. You know, but I know she's really hurt, and she named him Shemaya for me, you know? Yeah. I love her with all my heart, but time's going on and all that, you know, and um, she doesn't really say much, you know, but I know she's hurting when I do start talking about it and that. But then I've got a sister in America, and um, when I talk to her about it, she says, they could be abusing him. And then I tell my other sister, she says, yeah, but you can't really tell someone that, but I'd rather hear the truth. Yeah, but you know, you, you just cannot think about those things. Otherwise, you're going to get and destroy it, and you can't. You have to have the faith. Mm. I'm sorry. You have to have the faith that he's protected, because that's the only way that actually we can go through this hell. Because if we start thinking that they are destroying the soul of our children, that they are abusing them, then it's much harder for us. We need to have the faith that they are protected and that they are going to find his way out, his way out to, yeah. to find us and that they are very strong on their soul and um, and you you have cousins, he has cousins, he has siblings that they are going to to yeah. find him even, yeah. even if we are not here he has yeah. a family that he's going to carry on doing yeah. The thing's yeah. for you, you know that. And his sister, his sisters, they they promised me that if anything ever even happened to me that they would um make him know the truth. Yes. And find him and Steve, you know? how is life now? How is life for you? Yeah, well, I'm alright, you know, I can I can see my siblings and you know, I've got all my I've got my life but but it's That's hard seeing your siblings growing up and you oh, know. My siblings, yeah, I can go to. Like, my, my son, since they took him, he's an uncle. Because my oldest son has got a little boy, so I'm a grandfather. But, um, so, Samaya's an uncle. Um, a bro um, one of his uncles, my one of my brothers, died from cancer, brain tumour. So, he, he's lost those, he, you know? Those moments. Yeah, and, and life's going on. Yeah. But um, like I said, but I can go to the cemetery. I can see all my siblings. I can go on holiday with my family. Yeah. You know? But, I'm all right. Okay. I, would rather, I would have rather them punish me. Yeah, but, but you say you are all right, but are you happy? No. No. That's what I mean. Just Shamaya. Yeah, because your thought is always with him. Yeah. Yeah. I can deal with everything else. Yeah. Just, just what they've done to Shemaya is, um, is broke my heart. Of course, I can see yeah. that he's very, he has your eyes. He's very similar with you. I can see that he's very similar with you. Yeah, a lot um, of people looks like me. Yeah. Uh, Steve, if um, if if God would allow it to Shemaya to watch this video. Looking right into the camera to Shamaya's eyes, what would you like to say to him? Oh man, <laughs> oh. to see that boy again, I would rather that than a million pounds and no money, nothing. 
can um, compare me seeing that little boy again, you know? And I, 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 I tried to give them my life to prevent what's happened to him happen to him. I tried as a father. And, and my sister said that I have to keep strong because I've done everything that I could do as a father to prevent my son going through what he's going through. And I did. I pulled every stop out. I got a letter from um, the MP, um, Michelle Donovan, to the, um, to the judge. I've done everything. There's, there's, there's nothing else I could do. And you want to say that you love him. I love my son, yeah. All the, all the social services done was um, ask me if I want to take antidepressants and gave me um, a, a little bit of um, counselling. And that's it. So I we take your son. son and we give you some counselling. Yeah, here's some tablets, give you a bit of counselling, see you later. Yeah, and that will cover it, the whole. Yeah, it's an abridement, it's like a death. Yeah. And no one to mourn with. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I love my son unconditionally. I know, that, Steve, that I have seen quite a few stories and I, 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 I share with them because I find them beautiful. That's where I keep my faith. Families, they join together and the destiny helps to bring everything together. You know, when sisters, they meet through TikTok and families, they, they meet through Facebook. And there is a kind of a DNA thing on, on, uh, on America. I don't know how that works very well, but the people, they find each other. People that yeah. they didn't know that they were, that they had sisters, that they had twins. Yeah. It's amazing. So things happen, right? Yeah, that, 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 that program on telly, Long Lost Family, I, I don't, I can't watch it. Have you ever seen that program? No. Yeah, it's called Long Lost Family. And that's when people get reunited after years and all that, you know, where they've been adopted and, and then they find them and then they, they reunite them and all that, you know, and they break down in that. So I watched it once, and um, this it it, it it was a boy and a girl, brother and sister, and it's like the sister was living lived a nice life, you know. She she was all clean and dressed nice, and her brother was in a bit of like he was. They lived in different countries, but he was in rags and all that, you know. And um, so she knocks on the door, and they're filming, and um. They're looking at each other, and um, the boy's looking at her, but he's shy, and he's turning away and that. And after about a minute, they hugged, and they never let go of each other, and they were crying with the pain of the loss yeah. that they've been through, you know? And you can't replace it. No. But once, the, once these members of family, they join together in a hug, it heals. It yeah. heals. And and finally, they found the peace that they were looking for. Sometimes, even without knowing that there was a peace missing. Yeah. And yeah. and and that's why I keep the faith. And yeah, yeah. The 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 Shemaya's mum is not in a good place at the moment, and that's because of. You know what she's going through she says you know but she's not in a good place whatever i i believe that there is that no one has the fault the mother does not have the fault the father does not have the fault these social services they know what they are doing they they go to vulnerable people and they are going to put the finger right in there where he's bleeding they're going to make the things worse Worse, and yeah. they are going to look for a chance to an opportunity. Even if you have not had a vulnerable situation, even if you are not on drugs, even if you are not on alcohol, even if you are not on, on antidepressants, even if you did not faint in the middle of the street, they are going to say that you had a shotgun in the house, and you didn't. Yeah, that's right, yeah. They had to make something up to remove him from me, yeah. So I suppose, I believe that probably they were not happy 
when you try to protect Shamaya from the situation of the mother that she would have been back to the drugs and you protect him they had already a plan for him so that's yeah, why they had yeah. to take the social worker because he was not going along and they yeah. bring someone evil to steal yeah. him and to make money from him because yeah. that boy was worth a lot of money yeah. and, and if anyone knows who where so this sarah phillips is working like if she's for if she's for cornwall council london borough Wales, I would just like to know freedom of information. Yeah, just because you did that. ask on free on that thing of freedom of information. You did ask for her, didn't you? Yeah. And the reply was. Was well, she doesn't work for the local authority no more? Okay. So, so if someone knows which cemetery she is on, please say where where is the grave, right? Uh, oh yeah. I know, I know, I've got a few things that I could do to the grave, but, um, yeah, it's just very suspicious that she's just gone. Yeah, so, she, yeah. She, she came in to the case. To do the job. She done the job, and then she's gone. Yeah, so, probably, she has your child. Because if that thought is so many times on your thoughts, maybe it's your instinct telling that she has him. Yeah. Because e even the foster carers who had him for 15 months, um, when I made those complaints and I got the nine proven, they asked them be, to be interviewed and, and they declined, they refused to be interviewed. And the only reason why I can think is that if they did get interviewed and told just the truth of what they've seen and experienced, the local authority probably threatened them with not giving them no more work. Yeah. So they, it's like they put their finances or their work before my son, you know, my son's not, this, this isn't a, um, a house was being repossessed or a car, it's my son and his life. Yeah. yeah. And that's what's happened, do you know what I mean? And um, yeah, it won't stop it and it, it, it's not getting any better, like they might think or the local authority might think that as time goes on, you forget, yeah. you just move on and not bother, but Steve, it's, it's, before it's, I, I forget, um, if you have, I have been asking this, so I think it makes sense to ask you too, um, can you share an email with everyone in case if someone has something to let you know about uh, the surroundings or about this woman? Can you share your email so someone can contact you, please? Well, um, won't they be able to um, put it on your on your site? But anyway, it's stevie.burke at icloud.com. That's stevie, i.e. dot burke, B-U-R-K-E, at icloud.com. Okay, well done. So, um, regarding the, the judicial issues, you have done uh, all the court, have you, have you tried to go to the European court? No, I didn't, no. I, I went as far as to stage two, stage three, and then the ombudsman, and um, like I said, because of the complaints, they said that... Um, I could take legal action against them, and um, I went through every solicitor, everyone, and it's like a lot of firms are scared to take the local authority on. So I went all the way round until um, civil advice was giving me the same numbers that they gave me in the beginning, after 2030, and I rang everyone, everyone, everyone. Only, I think one of them said that they would um, try and take legal action against them and they wanted £700 to start procedures. So um, I got had the money in my, in my account, rang them and asked them for their account details. But before I did the transaction, I said to them again, please, don't just take this money and then tell me crap, just 
try your best for me. And because they could see and feel my passion, she, they never took the money and, and said that they didn't think they could do it because they were going to probably just take the money, try and just mess around for a bit and go. But because she seen how passionate I was, you know. So they said, we are not taking the money and yeah. we are not going to do these. No. Okay. Because probably they, they, they have a bit of empathy. This yeah. man is already so destroyed. We, they took his son. We are not going to take the, the money that is left. Yeah, that's right, yeah, because they could have easily took it and then messed around and then said, right, we tried to do this, but um, um, rare, rare, rare and all that, but they, because they felt my passion. Yeah, so there was no one to help you to take no the one. case to the European court. No, and I've got it in black and white, but from, from the um, complaints, people that I can take legal action against the local authority for what they've done, stop me from seeing my son, cutting his hair, which is a cultural, significant cultural issue, yeah. stop me from seeing him illegally, um, all nine complaints what I've got, and they said I can take legal action against them if I so wish, and I'm just sat here, yeah. years later, Steve, not knowing what to do. Steve, you know what they have done to you. You know that they do lie, that they plan against the parents, that, that they do conspire. They, cons they conspire, uh, conspire, yeah? They do conspiracy it's, against the families. It's now, called multi-agency. Yeah, that they work all together, and these yeah. involves nurseries, um, social services, policemen, foster carers, psychologists, doctors, many people that are involved. Now, your family knows about these because they know who you are and how you were treating Shamaya. Now, if, if when you try to say to a friend or someone like in a pub or, you know, in a, a work colleague, someone in society, and you see on their eyes that, no, you have done something wrong, that's why they took your son. What do you have to say to that people? How how do you feel? How how can you fight back? They have taken your son and you are not the victim, you are the cause of the problem. How how can you say to the society? How can I, you explain I, this? That's a, that's a hard question. I don't know. I, I don't know how to deal with that because Christmas, for example, or just walking through town. Christmas just, just finished and um, I'm seeing fathers with their children. I go to, if I go to McDonald's, there, there might be a, a father who's separate from the mother and he's with his daughters and that. And I, I see it every day, fathers with their kids and my heart just bleeds because it makes me feel like, am I different to them? Am I not good enough? Wasn't I good enough to look after my son? Am I different? And I, I don't harm children, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 that, and that's what happens in, oh. And, and, and when someone says, um, do you have children? What do you yeah. say? Yeah, I do. I always say yeah, I've got three and just leave it as that. But um, I've, got, I've got a lot of nieces. So my, my niece who had my son, her brother, me and him are close, and he's got two. He's got two beautiful children. So anyway, I'm at around his house. We having Sunday dinner, and his daughter. She's good at dancing and TikTok and all that. And she's always asking for my pin on my phone. So I said, Oh, all right. So I get it. And then she get get goes on to TikTok and she's doing all her dancing. And then she asks to if she can download it. And her dad says no and all that. But anyway, so she's going through my phone. She's seen a picture of my son. And, she said, and I said, oh, that's Shemaya, it's your cousin. And then her brother was looking, and he said, what, what does he look like now? And I couldn't yeah. say anything, do you know what I mean? It's heartbreaking, so, you know, I've got to just change the subject. Do you think so, that you will recognise that picture, if you would see it now? Will he recognise himself? Yeah. I don't know. 
I think he would recognise me though. Yeah. As he sees my eyes and that, yeah. And his voice, your voice. And my voice, yeah. Yes. From he was in the womb and in his mum's stomach. Yes. He's, he's he, one of the things. That's why I was doing that question to you, Steve. One of the things that it really hurt is is first of all is to see that life just carries on like yeah. without no, nothing has happened to you and it seems no one really cares no. that happened to you but it's not my problem and you have done something wrong and you know that you have done something wrong because social services they don't take children for nothing yeah for nothing so she's lying she has done something wrong and uh, and the lack of empathy and even sometimes another thing that really hurts me is people that have been through the same hell they are sometimes the first ones to point the finger yeah yeah that's right yeah instead of coming all together and and because they know what social services they are but there is a difference between us and another people is that we know that yeah. we love our children and we have done nothing wrong yeah and i believe God, god's witnessed everything and and he knows and he's not sleeping and he knows he how knows. much i love my son and how much i cherished him and that the judge went as far as to say that i'm too possessive i'm too possessive over my son Sorry, what does that mean? The judge said I'm too possessive. Oh. Like, like I care for him too much. You know, they, they kept on moving the goalposts, but I didn't know what to do. You were too possessive of your son? Yeah, he said that to me, yeah. The, um, I, for his birthday, I bought him a, a name chain. You've seen it when, when he, the, the bubbles was coming down on his birthday. Yeah. They asked me about that. Did I buy him a chain? And, you know, I, I didn't know what to do. You know, it's not a thing where they're saying, did he get scalded with hot water? Do I leave him on his own? Was he eating food out of the bin? No. Did you buy him a chain? And then when they did take him from me, I'm on the other side of the fence. They did a thing called schedule of expectation. And they're telling me what, that I shouldn't buy him no clothes, not to buy him this, not to buy him no gifts, unless I ask the social worker, Sarah Phillips, first and all that, yeah. So you're made to sign a contract of expectations. Schedule of expectation, yeah. To, uh, in, uh, and they made the parents to sign that if they want to see the kids in contact. They call contact. That's yeah. This, all these amazing words. To see yeah. your child, to see your son is a yeah. contact. So yeah. for you to see your son, the condition is you have to sign a piece of paper where you write it down that you are not going to bring gifts you're not going to bring toys. You're not going to bring anything to your son. No, and not unless I ask Sarah Phillips, the social worker, first, yeah. Yeah. I smile. I smile because it's horrible. I, I think he's dismissing, his uh, cognitive dis dissonance just to try to dismiss how horrible they are. And unfortunately, in, a, in a, one of the previous videos, I must say that there is one woman that has comments how she can smile and joyful when this father and this mother, they are saying horrible things. And my thought is, I'm sharing these stories to the world and how you, person, can say that I'm joyful. I have been through the same. They take a son from me with five days old. How do you think I'm joyful with these? Can you not feel some empathy if your brain does not accept and cannot even comprehend what they have done to us? How can you comprehend anything? You know, they they're heartless. They are. So yeah. I'm, I'm in here bringing all these parents, giving voice to them, giving voice to the children, so and, and try to raise awareness to the society, the ones that they think that we have done something wrong, and yeah. they are judging me for having a smile. Obviously, 
to deal with this, I have to use my cognitive brain. I cannot be in here crying. Otherwise, that is not going to help the father that is in front of me. I yeah, have to yeah, be yeah. strong for him. And I need to yeah. I need to give voice to Shemaya, not be crying. No, that's right, yeah. And, and the, the, um, the man who was doing the um, investigation for me and that, the complaints, he said that they showed me little. They showed me little, if any, empathy. None. They were no. heartless. No. Heartless. They never tried to help me or... No. Or to keep him with his family. Um, years ago, when they used to do cap, capital punishment, the judge would put a black thing on his head when he sentenced someone to, to death in it years ago. And um, in the family court, they say nothing else will do. And that means adoption. Take, take him away. And yeah. It, it, it was like a shiver. Yeah. And to the movies and on TV, they say it's the last, the last thing that we do. Uh, we try all the family, we try all the remedies, and it yeah. is the last thing that we do. We put the child it, for adoption. Yeah. They never, like I said, the foster carers said that they could do shared care. They never explored it. Sarah Phillips, when she, when the mother made, made her aware. She was angry about that, yeah, and stopped, stopped the foster carer from seeing the birth family. Yeah, I sometimes I think about if I would have money, if I would, uh, um, how is the word in English, the heritage, lots of money. I wonder how this would would would, would happen now. Will they come along and then steal the money that is Santiago's, my son? How would that happen? You know, because they take your son, they take his culture, they take his, his roots, but, uh, you know, if you'd have a fortune, if you'd have a house, a palace, land, all these things, they are your sons. So, you know, they are they are taking so much. It's it is so much. Is is yeah. They ripped my heart out. Is I don't know if uh, what I'm trying to say is is coming along, but is 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 people they do not understand what what the family they go through unless they really feel they they put our shoes and they go through through these. Steve, um, we have about one hour and 20 minutes now. Uh, would you like to say something to finish regarding... Um, all I can say is that I, don't, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, you know. The children are innocent and um, they don't deserve to go through what they've gone through. And for, for a parent what loves their children... They wouldn't sit back knowing that their child is going to go through trauma, grief, confusion, and a sense of loss. I would, I would have given my life to prevent that from happening. Um, I even said to them that I would do me mentoring, like, you know, because like, I never had a chance. They would give me a chance. It's the first time this ever happened to me. I would have done mentoring to teach other people not to do crime or, you know, that you put your child first because of what I nearly, I, I nearly lost my son, but they didn't want to give me not even that chance to say, wow, look what I nearly went through. Yeah. And cherish him, they just ripped him away. Yeah. And it took me to deal with it. You never had a chance. Never had a chance, no. no. They made their mind up before it even happened. Yeah. Secret courts is called legalized child abduction. Um, Judge Wildblood, he's an advocate for for um, forced adoption. Yeah. You know. Have they Phillips. done? Have they done psychological tests on you? Have you been through that? Psychological. Yeah. Psychological well, tests, the assessments. Well, to see that I'm my, my mental, I'm right. fine. 
Yeah. Is that what we left? No, but there is a thing that they call every single parent. I, we, me and Leon, we have not done it. We denied to do that because we knew what they were doing already. So they, they, they say that every single parent, they, they have a personality disorder. Okay. Yeah. Or something like that. So, so they, 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 they ring a, a psychologist that obviously belongs to the, to them. And and yes. some of these people they don't even see the parents. They write so, it down that they have a psychological disorder, yes. and then they I, say you are not a good parent. <laughs> yeah, I did see a psychologist actually. His name was Doctor Aries, and um, his report was fine. It was fine. Yeah, because they tried to say that I was dependent on drugs and all this sort of stuff, and he said the way I present myself, do, 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 do I seem to you like I'm dependent on drugs? Do you know what I mean? And then. Um, when I did a bit of research, I realised that Dr. Aries comes from Cornwall. Um, judge Wildblood is a circuit judge, and he works in Gloucester, Baines, and Cornwall. And I've heard rumours, but as I said, I can't find her, that Sarah Phillips comes from Cornwall. So, so they have someone in common. Something's going on down at Cornwall, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll, I'll always be speculating. Yeah. And so and so the day I die, or until I yeah. see myself again. Steve, another thing. I have been invited in hospital by a doctor to commit suicide. Have you, have they tried something like that towards you? Have they, they, have they tried to suggest something on you? What, that I would commit suicide? Yeah. Nah. I think I told them in court that I would rather die before they take my son. But um, if I had ever done anything like that, then they, they would have their thumbs up thinking, right, that's one less problem we've got to deal with yeah. to keep Samaya. So, so that's something and, that we do not do, isn't it? <laughs> that, that, that's the equation. Yeah. I, I will try my best to be there yeah. until 2032, waiting for that doorbell to knock to see and look in those eyes again. Yeah, so we um, are that team, the Oreos, that we are here, strong yeah. for I'm our children. Yeah, I'm fighting for my son, and the yeah. hurt was in me is so raw, like it happened yesterday. If they watch this, it hasn't gone anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Unconditional love. Yeah. And I want my son back, I still do it, and it ain't going nowhere. Yeah. I've never harmed, they've never done him nothing wrong. Yeah, and we... we, we the bond meaning was so tight. Yeah, and, and we are thirsty for justice. But yeah. we cannot say what we would do. And that's yeah. it. Yeah, just prevail, it will. Yeah, we will leave God and the energy yeah. of the life to yeah. do the justice. Because yeah. it's not it's not ours to do yeah. it. It's not on our nature. To do what we wanted to do, yeah, not on us. Good, good over evil. Yeah, we are different. It will be evil, yeah. We have love, and and that's the love that is giving us the strength the to strength, do this. Yeah, yeah. If, if I thought I'd done something wrong, and they took that boy, I would I would have to accept it. Yeah. And think, wow. Look what I put him through, really, you know, but I'm glad, I hope that he's all right in that, because I really put him through a lot and all that, you know, but to know yeah. that it's a lie, yeah. and, there, and there was a different ulterior motive, I cannot swallow that pill, yeah. and I won't. And that's what drives you to go to every single paperwork, to do yeah. every single timeline and this and that and it's horrible what they do the psychological torture that they do to us but we still go because he's our son and yeah. we are here i know that it's hard every single day to get out of the bed and to fight and to survive but for the love of our children we are here and we don't give up yeah never ever unconditional Steve, thank you so much for being strong, for sharing your story that is horrible. 
It, yeah, is, it is a pleasure to give voice with you to Shamaya. I hope and I am sure that Shamaya is going to find his way to you. The brothers, <laughs> the cousins. Family, yeah. You have a beautiful family that is waiting for Shamaya. I want to send my love to you, to your Thanks. sister, to your niece, to all of them, because I know what you are going through. Yeah, because all of my sisters are waiting to watch this now. I'm, I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much for trusting me on yeah, doing thank this. And I, I thank you for doing this for me, all right? And um, we're keeping in touch anyway, so... It's my uh, pleasure. Thank you. It's my, my, my pleasure. In, uh, I don't know sometimes if it's the right word, because I'm not English, but it is a pleasure to me that you trusted me doing this. To do this, yeah, that's right, yeah. And you're the only person that I've trusted to vent, you know, and I feel comfortable. And I hope that you get a lot more prescribers. I, I just hope that someone that has the power, a journalist, someone that can do an investigation to share these. Because I know that BBC is sharing Georgia's scandal, but BBC is not going to say to the English what they are doing in England. So we need a journalist somewhere outside of England to show yeah. to the world what they are doing in England. Yeah, but um, I'm going to share this to a lot of people and so your name's going to start ringing because a lot of people are going to know and subscribe to your channel. So the more, the better. Yes, we want to give voice to our children and I want to give strength to all other mothers and fathers and yeah. grandmothers to lose the fear and to yeah. speak because we need to do these for our children. They need to know the truth. And give them a voice. And give them a voice. Thank you ever so much, right? Thank you, Steve. Thank you for oh, this. Thanks. And I, I send you all my love and strength. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers, Thank you. Bye-bye. Keep Bye. in touch. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.